What I'm going to do is to start from where I am now and go backwards that 20 years when we first met. Um, I've been living in Deng Xiaoping's uh, great city called Tianjin in the south of China. Uh, this is from the outlook from my flat. It's a high-rise city. Um, the Chinese are amazing at um, plants and trees. The infrastructure of Tianjin, a, a city built in 30 years for 12 million people. Um, and this is the middle of it, a lake. That's the center. Um, you can't walk down a boulevard unless you're under a tree in China. The trees were planted, moved that size. So um, there's an awful lot going for Tianjin. Um, it, every motorway has to have, if, if there's an available piece of land, it's got to be planted. Um, so they're great gardeners. Now, what I've been doing is not building the great um, high rise. I've been working at this base. The research base is built by the biggest developer, Wanka. Um, and it is, um, its purpose is to research new housing ideas, uh, components. Um, I want to particularly talk about the, um, the, the greenhouse in the middle of this. How can I point to this? Here? Um, now, the greenhouse is actually, um, or the greenhouse idea, is really to, to reinforce the landscape architects of the, of the great cities. This, this um, uh, developer is developing in 39, uh, no, 54 cities, and they build 150,000 apartments a year. So they're building enormous um, um, volume of, of, of cities, and amongst them are the parks and the, and the connections. Um, so they want to research what, how, how a rainforest works. Uh, the, the, um, the two rings, the yellow ring and the white ring. The yellow ring is where the, is Yunnan, and it's the top end of the uh, Mekong River. Um, and they want to transport a greenhouse, a, a, a rainforest, and move it to, uh, to the research base and, and put it in a cocoon, like, hence the bottle. Um, this is the Mekong. And the first thing I went there, and the first thing I saw was this mist. The mist is rain made by the trees. About 25% of the rain in a, in a rainforest is recycled. Um, and it's in layers. When you look at it objectively, you can see these, these different layers um, all fighting for the sun. Um, and then what is a tree? And I've tried to get across this idea that a tree is not an object, it's a process. A tree is really a bridge between the water table and the sky, the clouds, it makes clouds. Um, it, it has a, a mineral cycle and a water cycle. Animals play an enormous part, and below ground, the fungus does all the trading with sugar and, and, and nitrates. Um, and so I started um, or getting more and more interested in, in, in the tree as a structure, as an adaptable structure. And the only thing that fits uh, the only foreigner, if you like, it, that fits in the tree structure is the spider web. Um, so we looked at this, and, and really what I'm describing now is, the pro is, is designing by process. I'm saying that form follows process, and not function. Um, and this is how I approach the design process. Um, I take top left the, the spatial arrangements, and I end up with a shed uh, with a t tall middle to it. Um, I then looked at a very sort of um, uh, rationalized uh, cube made of um, bamboo scaffolding, which I thought would be quite fun. And then we, we got very excited about bamboo structures um, on the next row, and then finally ended up with this thing which, which you call the spider's web with these columns. Um, and then the architects and the, and the clients said, well, why can't we have a dar grid? Everyone has dar grids. And I said, yeah, but the dar grid is a fruit. It's not the tree. I'm interested in the tree. Um, and so we got into, into um, uh, forms which were inspired by science, by, by symbolic. Very, very interested in symbolism in China. And we started looking at spiral um, helixes and so on. And we ended up bottom right uh, with a building which has actually, like the tree, aerial roots. It, it has surrounding the tree the propagation um, beds, 
which I need to sit in lower um, environments. And then in the middle, they wanted uh, at least 30 meters, 30 meter high trees. And they need to sit in what is more, more like a, a, pot, a pot. It's a potted plant. Um, and so you get a section like this, which is trying to be a, an adaptive structure, the adaptive structure like the tree. It looks more like a tree than, a, than, a, than, a, than an iconic shape, right? Um, and so I was getting this sort of thing. Um, I have to do all my own, my own drawing, by the way. I, don't, I just sort of sit by myself in the corner in this research space, drawing away. Um, so these drawings are rather funny. This doesn't seem to be... Oh, here we go. Um, so there's the pot, and we had to work out how to make it. And so you start off with piling, uh, piling the ring, and then forming a ring, and then a, an artificial landscape that goes inside, and then a, um, a, a bubble that goes on top. And the bubble is made of ETFE, it's a pneumatic structure. Um, and it's like a cocoon, and I'm looking for a, 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 a cocoon-like uh, permeable membrane. Um, and that goes on top, and then inside you have these um, suspended walkways. Um, and you also need a hat. In China you need a hat. For this building, um, when the sun comes out, the temperature suddenly rises. And because it's enclosed in a cocoon, the trees will suffer. So you have to stop the sunlight for about four hours a day, and then it must retreat. So you need a hat that you can take off. And it must look like this when it's off, and then the hat goes on top. So it needs to be an architectural element. Um, and that's really what I ended up with. And then the, the services we put on the outside, and we don't mind. Um, I, I pointed out that the tree, this actually is one tree, top left. Um, and the, uh, underneath the ground is, is as much of a tree as there is up above. So it would be nice if people, visitors actually saw the underground before they went into this, this greenhouse. Um, and, this, and this is really a story. They wanted to see the forest floor. They wanted to um, see the top. In, in a rainforest, most of the life happens in the canopy. And you've got to get up there. And when, in Yunnan, we found this wonderful structure, which was just like a spider's web. You know, it could have been a Waxman, but I don't think it was. I think it was probably an American, actually, who did it. But I was, I was trying to find out who did this, this, this beautiful piece of work attached to the trees. Um, so I've, I've really used that again inside. Now, um, it, uh, the reason I'm showing you all this is because when we actually produced this, and, and th this was my final presentation, to show how the building responds to, like, to, to, to the rain and to the sun and changes its form. Um, they actually were more attracted to this. Um, the guy that built the, um, the, the, the gherkin, the gherkin architect, and even, even the South <laughs> Korean one. You know, and, you know, and then um, they said, well, can't we have the gherkin and then just put mixed ideas inside? So <laughs> he started drawing this. You know, and you can just see that actually um, everyone actually is not interested in, in so much the process, but actually the form. Um, and, and that's very true of where things are in, in, in the base. But we, are, we have actually succeeded, Matthias and I, in building a dining hall, um, which is... Uh, made of containers, second-hand containers. Um, and it is um, a simple uh, shed with um, portals made from, the, from fitting the um, uh, containers together. Um, and it collects sunlight and it, it, it stores that energy in the form of cold water. Above it has a, it has a roof garden. Um, and it, it's, it, it's a very successful building in, in terms of the um, main function. Um, and unfortunately, it, in, and it has a, a, a curtain of, of water at 12 degrees, which dehumidifies when it's working. But unfortunately, they're not very good at shutting the door in China. So a lot of, a lot of the damp air comes in from the outside. Um, and now I'm taking you to another form. Um, which is a symbolic form, a building I built when I back to, to Australia, um, which is based on a, on, a, on a natural process. 
um, and it's, it's, a, it's a snail shell that sits next to a water plant. And it sits in a, in, in a, in a lake of its own, and it cools itself uh, at night. Um, now, everyone, um, the engineers didn't like it, but the local architects got very excited. Um, inside it has to fit the laboratory. Um, and in a way, it, the, America, the architects loved it and gave me prizes for it. I don't think it's very good, actually. I think it's, 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 it's stuck uh, in, in, in form uh, because I've, I've had to do it in a form and fitted the function into it. It's the other way around. It's not an adaptive structure. So, I'm now taking you to the termites. Now, the termites, um, I, when I first saw them, everybody knows me because of the termites, um, the termites, when I first saw them, I thought were, was an object, but in fact, it's a process. It's, a, it's, it, it's an earth fountain, um, and it's, the thing that sticks up above the ground is a lung, a breathing system, um, and you can find many of them all over Australia. And in Australia, we built uh, CH2, which is really um, a membrane structure where the external wall is the breathing thing. Um, and it has uh, a movable um, uh, western wall. It has um, um, a, 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 an internal plate which, with evaporative cooling, uh, sorry, not with, with um, uh, uh, radiant cooling and, and displaced and ventilation, which works very well. Um, and it has um, interesting ways of storing energy in the basement. Um, and it, it's designed, the, the windows are designed um, to reflect the amount of light in the street um, and, and so on. Um, that's the wavy ceiling. Um, and it has natural um, opening of ventilation at night to cool the ceiling. Um, um, and it also uh, removes its water or gets its water from the uh, neighboring sewer and, 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 and uh, purifies it, and that's used for cooling. Um, and then finally, in, in Zimbabwe, um, Zimbabwe is a completely different climate, different culture, different economy. So I've gone now from China to uh, Australia to Zimbabwe, which is the third world country, quite poor. And, and that's where we built this great hulk. Um, and it's, it was built on the, on the thinking behind the, the chimney, um, which is the way we thought um, the termite mound worked at that stage, and it has its chimneys. It has, um, it, it's based on night cooling using just simply uh, the, the fact that night temperatures are about 12 degrees lower than day temperatures, and you pump the cool air through it, cool down the structure, um, and, and that cools the building the following day. Um, and it's built with local materials, it's um, it's, it's, it, it, the other thing is that it's adaptive because it uses um, ideas taken from nature in its, in its, uh, in its look. Um, this is about um, how a, 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 a fingered structure um, is, is worse at absorbing heat during the day and better at getting rid of it at night. Um, and th this was 92, so you had a green facade in 92. Um, the other thing is that this was a very good model for the city. We took the, the lifts and all the external um, corridors and we suspended them over the street. It gave you a very lively street and it removed huge amounts of volume from the, from the office block. Um, and it seems to work extremely well. Um, and, that, and that's the performance. Um, losing about 10% of the energy of a normal air-conditioned building. And in China, um, I put this forward to them, going back, which was that really we need to th rethink the infrastructure on these tall blocks. Um, maybe we could, you know, I mean, this particular one was completely mad. It was actually making a, a spiral street go up, held up on towers, and the apartments, which would have a much shorter life, would be fitted in. Um, and, um, and finally, uh, this is a village which I uh, go to regularly now in China. Um, it's absolutely beautiful. It's two and a half, it's about 2,000 years old. The infrastructure has never changed. 
The houses have many times, but somehow the infrastructure was right. That is an adaptive structure, the one I've been looking for. Thank you.